Hi everyone. Greetings from TechSupper. Today we are going to look at some of the updates which Oracle has introduced for Oracle Integration Gen 3 very recently in month of June 2024. So let's look at some of the integration and connecti feature, connectivity features which have been enhanced by Oracle. So increase in active integration limits. So what does it mean? The limit on the number of active integration per service instance has been increased from 700 to 800. This means you have 100 more integrations or 100 more active integrations which you can have per service instance. This will mean that if you breach the 700 limit earlier, you had to provision a new instance in, in Oracle Cloud. But now the increase has been increased to 800 so you can still continue to use your existing instance and utilize its capabilities second increase in string size limit so the string size limit of 10000 characters is enforced this limit has been increased now this applies to uh, variables in the assign activities any strings which you form via concat functions in assign activities or in the mapping activities. Third, debug tracing level reset after 24 hours. So let's consider a scenario where a developer or a user is using Oracle integration. Here they activated an integration in the debug mode, in the debug not recommended tracing level mode and to test their integrations and see what data is being uh, received and sent in the integration. Now let's suppose they forget to reset the tracing level uh, after their testing. Now all the future runs of this integration will be run in the debug mode. But after this update this won't happen. The Oracle will automatically reset the tracing levels for all the integrations to production mode. Hence, saving on the memory and, uh, and the runtime of each integration. Fourth point, active integration count by project on the dashboard page. Here, you can view the total number of application, schedule, event integration in projects by clicking the active integration link on the dashboard page. So once you are on the Oracle integration home screen, you navigate to observability and under that you will find a link for dashboard. Here, earlier we used to see a lot of information for around the integrations, connections, agents, etc. Now, a new information is available for the users where they will see how many integrations are grouped under projects and how many are standalone or package integrations. Now, this information may not, may not seem useful at first when we are starting with our integration project when you have only 10 15 integrations but as we go forward where the in number of integrations will keep on increasing maybe say 100 200 300 at that point in time it will be very useful information to know how many are grouped under project and how many are still standalone if we see that the standalone that the number of integration are in standalone are more then we'll see if we can group them under a project because having integration under projects is always helpful in uh, deployment in migration of code and also there is a one cool new feature which they have oracle has introduced we'll just talk about in the next slide which is view the dependencies dependencies between project resources now how this is useful so you can view the dependencies between the resources, integrations, connections, lookups, JavaScript, libraries, and events in a project. As of now, in my uh, sample screenshot, you just see integrations and connections, but, but we can have everything here, like lookups, JavaScript libraries, and events. How this is helpful? So let's suppose what you have to do to view this, you just have to go to your uh, project, click on the project names. Under the main home screen, you need to go to projects. Under projects, you need to click on a particular project and then click on the uh, view the dependencies button on, the, on that screen. And this particular screen, which you see in this screenshot will appear. Here, once you hover over integration, you will see 
two lines going to two connections which is open api mobile phones and rest connection for mobiles so this is what this integration is connected to in this in this particular project once we have more number of integrations more number of connections lookups and events we would be able to see a connection is being utilized by how many integrations or vice versa a integration is connected to how many connections so all this information will become useful as an as and when the project size grows next import event based integrations into a project so now oracle has introduced a feature where you can import any standalone publish and in standalone integrations which are publishing or subscribing to events into a per, into a project importing a publishing integration into a project also imports the event so this is a very crucial uh, point in this uh, in this feature that importing a publishing integration into a project also imports the event the event becomes visible in the event section of the project details page next notification email enhancement now this is a very good enhancement uh, from various perspective we will discuss about this so a new level of email address verification has been added on the notification page when you enter an approved sender email address and click save on the notification page a verification code is sent to the address you must enter the code received by that email address on the notifications page upon successful verification status is changed to verified why this is important because earlier there was no such mechanism to verify the uh, verify the receive uh, sender email address now uh, you could have typed a dummy email address and send that notification now you have to have a working email address to send that notification next point in the email enhancements the suppression list shows the list of suppressed emails by default you can browse or search the list for addresses to remove so basically suppression list is the list where you cannot send emails while using the notification inside your integration now uh, there will use now you will have a default list of suppressed emails you can browse and search in this e in this list and if you want you can uh, add and remove emails from this list the number of emails sent per the enforced limit includes both success and failed messages so under the dashboard uh, where we see all the num all how many uh, calls have been made or how many emails have been sent under the notifications we will the number which is displayed now it includes both successful and failed messages next view the execution times of iterations in looping actions in the activity stream so let's suppose you have uh, activated an integration and you go to the activity stream to see what actions have been taken now you can view the overall time a looping action for example a while action or a for each action took to execute all its iterations so let's suppose a for each action inside your uh, integration run at least six times did a six iteration so now it will display how much time it took to do all the six iterations you can also expand the looping action to view the 10 slowest iterations and their times to execute and this also expands into showing how many what is the time taken by each iteration or basically it goes only till 10 if the number of iterations is more than 10 so this is a good feature to have because so uh, when you have a lot of iterations in your integration or when you so let's suppose you are working for an example you're working on ftp adapter and you're looping over the files and the number of files is more than 15 <clears throat> it would be good to know that whether which file is taking more time to execute read and write into the target location and so it would be good to know out of 15 which file took the slowest of the times and see if there is any issue with the data or how you can enhance the performance of your integration database payload sizes 
so the database payload sizes uh, has been increased the mysql adapter microsoft sql server adapter postgresql adapter ibm db2 adapter sap asc adapter netaza adapter and snowflake adapter now support 100 mb structured payload for the cloud and 50 MB structured payload with the connectivity agent. So let's suppose you are connecting to all these databases which are hosted on cloud and are available without the connectivity agent. You can get a 100 MB of structured payload, but if they are hosted behind a firewall and you need a connectivity agent to connect to them, then you can only get 50 MB of structured payload. So this is in, so that's it for today. These are all the updates which we have in the integration and connectivity features for June 2024. We'll see you soon with more updates. Thank you. Bye-bye.